I'm Scotty from Strange Parts. I'm behind the cell phone markets of Shenzhen, China. Today, I'm gonna try and pull off the iPhone upgrade that Apple hates the most. If you guys have seen either of the two videos I've done about it, you might know that I've been working on this custom iPhone, complete with a uh, light up Strange Parts logo. Now, if you haven't seen those videos, you can go check them out up here, but there's one problem still with this phone. It's only 16 gigs. Frankly, that's just not enough. So it's time to kick things up a notch. I'm gonna upgrade it to 128 gigs. The guys in the markets apparently are able to do this. And I've actually seen a guy do it. Basically just desolder the flash chip and swap it out for a larger one. Now, that part seems pretty straightforward. The trick is that you actually need to program the new flash chip. You need to copy the contents of one flash chip over to the contents of the new flash chip. So, I went out and I bought this, which is a flash programmer. It is this amazing custom-built machined test fixture. In here, you put the flash chip, close that up, it hooks up to your computer. Supposedly you can do some pretty cool programming. There's one problem. <laughs> and the problem is that it's Windows only software and I have a Mac. So first things first, I gotta go buy a new computer. So we are headed to the Xiaomi store. Xiaomi is kind of the apple of China, I guess you could say. They make all sorts of cool stuff, but they're more than a bit inspired by the Apple design aesthetic. You'll see what I mean when we get inside the store. I need to buy a laptop. PC, yeah. I can get this color in this size. Okay, okay. Yeah, let's get this one. Okay. This one in silver. Well, as you can see, that looks totally like your average Apple store, down to the uniform, even, you know, some of the laptops. I bought a Xiaomi Air. They're not exact replicas of the Apple stuff, just kind of copy the aesthetic. I installed the software for this test jig memory programming thing. Let's open it up and see what's going on. Okay, so I think it just wants me to connect. Let's get our test jig out here. This is a lightning cable. The in USB light is lighting up. Oh, maybe I have to turn it on. It talks. <laughs> it's amazing. It's got LEDs all over it. There's some pretty bad translations here. Let me try closing it and reopening it maybe. I've installed two drivers. I'm gonna try rebooting so it's not connected. I don't know, I don't know what driver I'm supposed to install. Just installing all of the drivers because I don't have a better strategy. Well, I've been banging my head against this for the past couple hours and uh, I just can't get it to recognize it. So I'm gonna call it a night and I guess go see the people that sold it to me in the morning and see if they can get it to work because I don't know what else to do. Anyway, it's another day tomorrow. Remember how I said this is the iPhone upgrade that Apple hates the most? Well, I'd like to talk a little bit more about that. But first, we need to talk a little bit about how companies figure out what price to charge for their products. Now, one approach is what would be called time and materials or, or a cost plus model. You basically just figure out how much it costs you to make and, and sell a product, and then you add some percentage profit margin on top. The other way is to try and figure out how much your customer is willing to pay for a product or how much they can afford. If you charge too much, then only a few of your richest customers will buy your product. If you charge too little, a lot of people will buy it, but you'll make less money per unit you sell. The big question is, how can you find that magic price point where as many people as possible buy your product, but you also maximize the amount of profit you're making, particularly from your richest customers? Well, instead of going back to the place that sold me the programming jig, I actually contacted the manufacturer. You know, they said, you know, have you tried installing the driver? And I said, yes. And they said, did you try swapping out the cable? And I thought for a minute and I said, no, I actually didn't try doing that. So I went and got another iPhone cable and sure enough, I don't know, they sent me a bad cable, I guess. It doesn't work, <laughs> but my other lightning cable does. So I feel really dumb. I spent a whole bunch of time trying to debug this and it was something really simple. Regardless, 
it now works. <laughs> so check this out. Here is the software and repair here. Now finally the port number shows up and I can hit connect. Doesn't seem to do very much. I think the next step is that I need to get a flash chip that I can put in this thing. Hopefully it'll do more once I've got a flash chip in it. So I'm headed to the cell phone market to go get some. And it's one of the things I really like about doing this kind of project here in Shenzhen is having such ready access to tools and parts and being able to talk to people who know a lot about them. I could order a lot of this stuff um, mail order, but it would really kill the momentum of projects having to wait, you know, a day or more to get something. Here, I can just walk down the street, get what I need, pop right back, and keep going. Oh, yeah, I'll take it. What? Ooh. Okay. Yeah, okay. Ooh. All right. Here it is. That right there is a 16 gig flash chip. I also, while I was at it, at the same booth, I picked up two 128 gig chips for the final upgrade. But for now, I just need to practice reading the old chip off the logic board. Um, so I'm gonna use the, the 16 gig chip uh, just for practicing that. Woo, there we go. A whole bunch of stuff. Enter the highest authority success. Can read and write. How about query info? That sounds good. Oh, look at that. All right, here's the serial number of the phone that this was in. And then color, <laughs> that is probably the color of the phone that it was in. Down here, sure enough, capacity, 16 gigs. Okay, so I think what I need to use this thing to do is I need to desolder the flash chip, the 16 gig flash chip that's already on the phone, read that and probably back up the kernel data. Like I need to somehow copy the data off of there, then put in the new 128 gig chip and copy the data back to it. That's my current understanding. So let's try this backup kernel data. All right, that has been backed up. So we can read the memory chip. Now I need to practice the soldering part, I think, which is like removing the chip from the board. So I got some practice boards. These are like known non-working logic boards. I'm gonna use these to practice soldering before I try this on the real working board. That right there in the middle, that's the memory chip. So I wanna remove that and uh, throw it in the test jig and see if I can read it. There we go. That actually worked pretty well. That went okay. <laughs> but not perfect. In the process, I busted off the, uh, the SIM card holder. The flash chip came off okay, actually. Uh, kind of surprised how well that worked for how poorly I did it. All right, all right, let's see, query info. Cool, this came from a black phone. <laughs> okay, so the chip is not fried, we can read it. Now it's mostly just a matter of practice so that I can do that liably before I try it on the working logic board. I'm gonna try this again and I'm gonna mount it a little bit differently. So hopefully it won't knock that off this time. Oop, some card fell off again. See this? That's not great. Not only did the SIM card holder fall off this time. I also pulled off a bunch of little capacitors or resistors. I think I need a better board holder because this one is kind of shitty. And then as far as pulling off the components, I think I've got to carve off more of the epoxy. I think I'm gonna need more of these practice boards. Now, you can't really get away with charging rich people more and poor people less for the same product. That's where an idea called price differentiation comes in. Price differentiation is where you charge two different groups of customers two different prices. The idea is that you charge your poorer customers a price they, they can still afford, so they still buy your product, but you charge your richer customers more so you make as much profit off of them as possible. You can't get away with just trying to judge how rich someone is when they walk into your store and give them a price based on that. So instead, what companies do is they try and find features that richer customers are willing to pay more for and then they build a slightly different model that's more expensive that has those features. The goal is usually to make as few changes to the base model as possible 
while increasing the price as much as possible to maximize the profit. Whenever you go into a store or you go shopping online and you see a pricing grid that looks like this, it's a pretty good sign that price differentiation is what's at play. Now, looking at this price grid, we can immediately see that Apple has figured out that richer customers are willing to pay more for more storage. This used to be as much as like $300 US, but it's come down now, it's more like 100 to 150. I'm off to go see the Tool Brothers, which is one of my favorite tool vendors in the markets, to see what they have that might be able to help me with this problem of the, the SIM card holder falling off. Good to see you. Good. I need a better one of these. This one. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. That covers up where the where this is. Yes. That. Okay, I'll take this. <laughs> That right there is the important part though. It's what's gonna hold the SIM card holder in place. Well, the SIM card didn't fall off that time. <laughs> it's a start. All right, the second thing I need to learn how to do is I need to learn how to do BGA reballing. And what BGA reballing is, is it's putting the solder balls back on the pads on the bottom of these chips. I've seen people do this before. It's possible, but it's a little tricky. So it's gonna take a little bit of experimenting to figure out just the right way to do it. So the first step is just cleaning off the bottom of the chip. Uh, there's leftover solder and there's epoxy and things like that. So I'm gonna do that with a trusty soldering iron. All right, now we'll just uh, clean it off with a little bit of uh, alcohol and we'll be ready for the next step. This here is a reballing stencil, and it's used to create those balls. So basically, it's a piece of stainless steel uh, with holes in it that match the exact pads. And uh, I'm gonna smear solder paste, which is little microscopic balls of solder suspended in like flux. I'm gonna push those through the holes and then heat it up with the hot air gun. It's not perfect, but not too bad for a first try. I'm gonna clean it off and take the solder balls off it again and uh, just keep practicing a few more times. Hmm. It's weird the metal buckles when it heats up because it expands and that sort of pops it off the chip. I don't know what I'm supposed to do about that. See it up here? Not great. I have to try again. Okay, great. Okay, 10 more practice boards. If I can't learn this in 10 boards worth of tries, there's something wrong. Maybe I need to, need to go to cell phone school. All right, let's give this a shot. The problem that I'm still having is I'm having two problems. I'm knocking off the really tiny uh, passives on this side of the board, and then I'm delaminating some of the solder mask underneath this chip. So we need to put some capped on tape. This is just to protect from heat. You know what? I'm gonna do this under the microscope. So it's these here that are giving me the trouble. I keep pulling off one of these little tiny 01005 resistors or capacitors. To be honest, they may not be necessary, but I'd like to try and keep them all there if I can. I still wanna figure out how to get all the epoxy off without knocking things off. I have this little blade set from Mechanic. Might be that what that's for. It's a BGA repair blade set. Let's give it a shot. There it goes. Hey, that was better. Now I've been watching um, other YouTube videos about this and I'll, I'll link to some of the better ones below. If you wanna try and do this yourself, this isn't really a tutorial. Um, <laughs> you don't learn from me. You know, hopefully I can explain to you sort of uh, what's behind this and what's involved, but if you really wanna do it yourself, you wanna learn how to be a proper, learn from what I learned from, and I'll, I'll link, to, link to some of the better videos I found. Gonna use solder wick. This is just a, a, like a solder braid. It just acts as a wick and, and draws up the liquid solder. Yeah, the, the 
temple got rotated, but we'll see. This might might still work out. No problem. Look at that. this is because all of the balls are underneath the chip there's no way to really know if if anything's shorted out or you know a bad solder joint or something like that the foxconn factory that does this undoubtedly has an x-ray machine that can actually x-ray the solder joints make sure they're correct but there's no real way for you know an amateur like me to uh to do this unless uh unless i take it to my local dentist or something not too bad all right, I'm gonna do one or two more of these just for practice, and then maybe I'll give the real deal a shot. I am down to my two last practice boards out of the 10 that I bought. I think I've got this mostly figured out at this point. The last one I did though, I ripped up some pads, and I read somewhere that maybe those pads are just not necessary and, and they come up easy and it's not a big deal that they're non-functional. But I wanna try at least one more and get it totally correct and then I'm gonna move on to the real deal here. Hey, there we go. That one was clean. Last board, last practice board, but I think it's time for the real deal. I was already to take the logic board out of this. And someone suggested, you know, you should try restoring this um, fresh from iTunes just to make sure there aren't any problems before you do the memory upgrade. I did that, and in the process of that, it had me upgrade iOS. And I left it while it was downloading the latest iOS version on the Xiaomi laptop, and uh, came back, and the screen no longer turns on. And I don't know. I can't figure out what's going on. Man, this is just frustrating because it's like a completely unrelated issue to what I'm trying to solve right now and it could set me back days. Ugh. Crap. Computer sees it now. It's just not, the, the screen isn't working. It's back. I don't know what happened. I reseated the cables a couple times. Ugh. Well, I'm really glad that actually didn't take too long to resolve uh, and that I didn't have to go buy another screen. Still not quite sure what the root cause was. Um, however, I think I want to do another test of my soldering abilities here before I try and do it on the real thing. I have uh, a logic board that is iCloud locked and these are pretty cheap in the markets because there's no straightforward way to unlock an iCloud locked board. So this will boot up, but I can't actually activate it. So it'll go into the like first use sequence. So my thought is to remove the chip just like I would for the upgrade, I clean everything up, reball it, put it back on, and just make sure that uh, the phone boots up again. So, wow, this is such a pristine board compared to the ones I've been practicing on. Goes. Oh, sweet. It's pretty clean. Obvious damage, I don't think. Okay, now let's reball this thing. All right, let's put this chip back on. Just let it cool down now and plug it in. Fire it up. Oh no! I think I tore my screen cable. Fuck. Man, it's not my day. Let's see if this works. Dude, I don't even know anymore. Ah, nothing. But at this point, <laughs> I don't know what it is that I broke. Is it the logic board, is it? I'm putting this wrong. Plug it in the left. Oh, oh God. All right, let's try it now. Nothing. I have to go fix this screen at least. I guess I can test it on my other phone. Uh, I'll give up for now. So I picked up another screen, but that iCloud locked board still won't boot. I'm getting my butt kicked by this. <laughs> I didn't think this would be this hard. So I went 
and got three more iCloud locked boards. My plan today is to do one or two of these, see how I feel, and see how that goes. And if it goes well, maybe I'll do one more, maybe maybe I'll move straight on to the, uh, the real deal, the fully working board. <laughs> Putting these coins on for added heat protection. I don't know. Or good luck. Well, we'll let things cool off and then we'll just shut. That's battery in screen. Now. <gasps> Holy shit! It works! <laughs> Okay, that takes a load off. I have now done it successfully once. There we go. Whew. I think I'm gonna do it once more and then I'll try it for real. If I can do it twice in a row, then who's to say I can't do it three times in a row? That makes my day. Okay, let's give this another shot. Last night, I succeeded in doing two iCloud locked boards correctly in a row. So, I think today's finally the day. I think I'm gonna do the real deal. But, I've got one more iCloud locked board. I figured I may as well do that, get warmed up here, get the, get the fingers loose, get my microscope all warmed up, and, uh, and then we'll jump into the real deal. Um, doing this one first might save me 200 bucks. We popped two pads, but I don't know. Hopefully, those are ones that aren't needed. Time to solder this back on. Coins on top. Okay, time to test this. It works. Three in a row, I think. It's time to do this for real. I'm gonna take uh, take the logic board out of the Strange Parts custom phone here and um, give this a shot. Here, I need to get it off. Right, here we go. This is the, uh, the working logic board. 16 gigs right now. Oh, <laughs> there are some missing parts on this. It works okay, but holy smokes. All of these capacitors are missing. Well, I guess those aren't needed. Ooh, four pads pulled off, not good. Well, let's hope those are the ones that are not used. I hope this works. I really, really hope this works. So we need to read some data off here and then program it onto the new chip. That worked. Oh, wait, what did that say? Is that an error? Doesn't sound great. Let's try cleaning it. Oh, this hard disk firmware is too low. I don't know what this means. That worked. I don't get it. Huh, maybe just a bad connection. All right, let's back this up. Backup kernel data. Okay, it's been backed up. I have two chips. These are my 128 chips. So you might be asking, why am I only doing 128 instead of 512? There's a guy out there who's done a 512. Turns out you can't easily get the 512 chips. Um, I am in contact with someone who helped supply that chip, but they don't have any more right now. So that is on hold. Maybe we'll do that in a future video. Maybe we'll do something even cooler. Let's plug this in. Okay, new hard disk. Can I just do write kernel data? That did work. While we're at it, let's change it to be white since my screen is right. In theory, that is all I needed to do. I'm a little bit worried about the partition stuff. Let me try rereading this chip and see what happens. Okay, that worked. Query info. That might be all I needed to do. Ah, I'm gonna have to do that one again. <laughs> if this works, it's 
gonna be a miracle. I'll let it cool this time. Okay, that looks pretty darn clean. Here we go. The last step to solder on the 128 gig programmed flash chip onto the board. So, lots of flux. Here goes nothing. Fingers crossed, big time on this one. Time to see if this works. The screen. Doesn't look to even be turning on, shit. Nothing. Fuck. Let's try plugging it into the computer. Uh, something happened. iTunes has detected an iPhone in recovery mode. You must restore, restore this iPhone before it can be used with iTunes. Okay. I mean, the screen doesn't turn on, but let's try restore iPhone. Yes, restore. That's a good sign. Oh, hey. <laughs> it's booting. All right, <laughs> I've got an apple. All right, I think this is working. Okay, this needs a SIM card to activate. Welcome to your new phone. Let's see, I could just restore this backup. Let's try it. I think that worked. It's booting up. It's got a white boot screen this time. All right. Restore complete. Well, iOS works. Let's see how big it says it is. 128. It worked. <laughs> I had my doubts as to whether I was gonna be able to pull that off. I knew it was possible. The question is whether I could do it. And uh, yeah, with enough practice, it is very doable. Now, now we gotta put this logic board back in the phone. I am gradually figuring out what the fuck I'm doing. There it is. Got it put back together and fully working. You can see right here, it's got 128 gigs. It seems to work just about as well as it did before. I think I'm gonna declare this custom iPhone complete. We've done three things over three videos. Uh, laser engraved a custom back, made a custom strange parts light up logo where the Apple logo would normally be, and then uh, the memory upgrade to 128 gigs. This took me way longer than I expected. I say that about most of the iPhone projects. I thought I was gonna be able to get it done in a couple days. I thought with all the background I have, uh, with the, the previous iPhone work I've done, and uh, it's taken me weeks. It's really taken me a lot longer to learn, and it's given me a lot more appreciation for the guys that do this kind of upgrade in the markets on a daily basis. Um, there's a lot of skill that goes behind this type of soldering and this type of rework and this type of working around the limitations that Apple has put in place. So why would Apple hate this upgrade so much? The answer is it's taking money directly out of their pockets. Now you can buy a smaller iPhone and upgrade it to the larger size for just the price of the memory chip. And those are cheap. Uh, this 128 gig chip cost me uh, about 160 RMB, which is about 25 bucks US. And yet the difference between buying a 32 gig 6S, uh, they don't make the 16s anymore, and 128, is a hundred bucks. So that was a hundred bucks that didn't go to Apple and I saved 75 bucks in the process. Now I, I spent a lot more than that because I had to buy tools and all these practice boards and stuff but there are repair shops here in the markets that have all that stuff already and will do the, do the upgrade while you wait. And yet this may be less of a problem for Apple than you might think at first. Because while richer customers are willing to pay more for storage, they're also willing to pay more for quality and peace of mind. And this upgrade, there's a good chance you would break your phone. Uh, you definitely are gonna void your warranty. And I think those richer customers that Apple is trying to target with this price differentiation are willing to pay that 
that hundred dollars more to just know that the phone was assembled by by Apple, by Foxconn, tested properly, and is backed by the Apple warranty if anything goes wrong. So at the end of the day, I don't know how much money this is actually taking out of their pockets. That being said, I think it about does it for this time. If you've been following along with the factory tour series I've been doing, uh, I've got some more of those videos coming up soon. I've had some interesting factories reach out to me saying that they'd be happy if I came and, and showed off what they're doing. So stay tuned for that. As always, I'm Scotty from Strange Parts. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more like it, hit that subscribe button down below. Stay tuned for more adventures. I'll see you next time.